Welcome to Verify in Field, the Millwork Podcast. Here's Jacob. For today's podcast, let's talk about Duckworks story. So our history, how Duckworks came to be. I get this, asked this a lot. How did we end up in Bolivia? Um, how did I come to start Duckworks? How did the name, where did the name come from? So I'm going to talk about all that today as well. So trying something a little different for these solo podcasts, give you guys a little bit of a different background. We'll talk a little bit about some of the stuff at IWF. If you've never been and you do work in this industry um, and you have the uh, opportunity to go, I, I highly recommend it. It is obviously a great way to see what's new in this industry, to see what's old in this industry, to see the latest software, machinery, hardware, companies, materials, things like that. But also the networking is really, really good. So who you get to meet, you know, even if it's just, hey, this is my sheet good vendor, going there and meeting a connection there and finding out, oh, I didn't realize you guys offer this product. I'm buying from this other vendor. You're another opportunity. Um, meeting the people that maybe you talk to through support with your software provider, um, whatever it is, you know, making those connections and even just meeting other like-minded shop owners, other people in the industry. Um, you realize how big this industry is and how big the opportunity is. It really is eye-opening. So I highly recommend going. If you need a ticket, uh, reach out. We can get you a ticket for free. We'd love to do that. And obviously, we'd love for you to stop by and say, hey, at the Duckworks booth. Um, there's a lot of educational sessions as well, though, that you can sign up for. So um, Eric Marshall, doctor of closetology, he is doing multiple sessions throughout the week. He's going to be at the microphone booth one day. He's going to be in the education seminars talking about uh, Closet Gold. So if you are um, if you're a residential shop or small shop and you're looking for ways to um, grow, ways to diversify, I think Closets and what he talks about in closet, his Closet Gold sessions is extremely valuable and interesting for our industry. Also, Jonah Coleman from Energy. He's the head of product over there. He's a good friend of mine. He is a super, super smart guy. Knows what he's talking about when it comes to engineering and millwork. And he's doing some sessions all about that, which I think is very valuable. Uh, if you're an AWI member or you're, you've heard about the cost of doing business survey, Lauren Borland is doing a session all about how to use that in your, your business planning, which I think is uh, really valuable as well. Uh, what else? Um, there's, there's a lot of good, good stuff, um, throughout the week. Oh, Nick Frost. Um, if you are, especially if you're a mosaic user, I don't have to tell you, um, he is, has a huge following and has built an incredible Facebook community for, um, shop owners and, and people in the mosaic community, um, and even outside of it. And, um, he's done a lot for that, but he also last year started a company, Frost CNC Tooling. He sells CNC bits and tooling uh, with his, their own proprietary uh, diamond coating, I think it's called. Forgive me, Nick, if I, I get that wrong. But he's got a booth, first time at IWF, um, and people are raving about his products. Um, incredible life, um, uh, getting a great deal of life out of the bits, longer, uh, more sheets per bit. And so he's saving a lot of people a lot of money with that and getting really good quality cuts. So go check him out. He's going to have some of the guys from the Mosaic community there throughout the week. Phil Anton, Connor Collings. Great guy. Great uh, product. Definitely go check him out. Um, so diving into our topic today, um, you know, as I mentioned, a lot of people, first question they ask um, is, how did I end up starting Duckworks? Um, and then how did I, we end up in Bolivia? If you don't know, um, outside of this podcast, I am CEO of a company called Duckworks. And for the last two and a half years, um, that's what I've been doing full time. We've been building a team and our team is mostly down in Bolivia, which is a country in South America. And surprisingly enough, they are Eastern time zone. So directly South of where I am now, which is in Georgia in the U S and we've grown a lot over the last two and a half years. And so we're winding back to before I was vice president of engineering for a company called USA Millwork. Um, I, I went to school for architecture, worked in the industry, in the millwork industry after architecture school for, you know, over a decade. I worked my way through a handful of millwork shops, um, working in the shop, doing CAD design, then doing engineering using microfilm. Um, building engineering departments and managing them, and 
the last four years before Duckworks, I was vice president of engineering at this company, USA Millwork. And if you don't know, USA Millwork, we were acquiring shops across the US. Uh, when I came on, we had just acquired our third here in the Atlanta area. And after I came on over the next couple of years, we acquired um, uh, one in Manassas, Virginia, and then Mission Bell out in California. And my job was to integrate all of our engineering teams, all of our processes. And so the we, you know, with the acquisitions, we got an engineering team with each shop already using Microbellum, but we were integrating it as a shared service was the goal. And so to part of the, the task at hand really was to be able to draw and engineer any project anywhere in the U.S. in a standardized template, standardized library to where we could manufacture it at any of the five facilities. And we accomplished that. You know, it took a long uh, number of years, but um, we built a new library. We migrated everybody to the same version of Microvelm from 6.7, from 7, from various builds, various libraries. And we fully customized a Microvelm component library to be able to support all the different standards, all the different machines. Every shop was different. And at, at the peak, I had 85 drafters and engineers on staff that I was that were within my, my responsibility. And, you know, post-COVID, everybody was remote. So from the start, it is very common in our industry, most of you probably know this too, there's lots of companies out there um, where you can outsource the submittal process. And by and large, that's all done in AutoCAD. We were in Microvellum, and so, you know, obviously there's pain points around later after approved drawings, redrawing all that in Microvellum to be able to produce. But also just the quality of the drawings, the, the, the process, everything, you know, was lacking. And so I had told my boss at the time, hey, if we're going to really scale this thing and, and make this work, we should build our own external team or that we train, we develop, we build the process. They work in Microvelm and we really incorporate that to allow us to scale as needed and handle, you know, the, the huge influxes of work, but... Um, scale back down when needed when we're at our, our normal levels. Because that's a, a problem for everybody is, you know, when you have a ton of work, you need to draw it. And then when you don't, what do you do with those engineers? So, you know, he had a really good friend from, from business school who was Bolivian and said, hey, you know, talk, let's talk, let's set up a call with him. I want to introduce you to my friend. He had a business partner that was an architect, went to school at UPenn for architecture, worked in the U.S. for a little bit, and then was back practicing um, in Bolivia as an architect. And he said, they both said, hey, you know, look, we can hire architects, graduates of architecture school, industrial design, civil engineering programs that are educated, um, have professional experience, fluent in English, and you can teach them millwork and microvellum. And so in January of 2021, we hired the first one. Um, and that's how it started was hey, let's just give this a try to see if we can build, um, develop our own drafters that work the way we teach them to and work as a part of our team and better as a part of our team. Can we build a better mousetrap? Um, and so, but they worked exclusively for us. And by the end of that first year, 2021, we had over 20 drafters working in Bolivia, full-time for USA Millwork, um, I had them split up across my regional teams because I had a regional supervisor for each of the five locations. So each supervisor had between four and five drafters each in Bolivia that we trained ourselves, onboarded ourselves, and they became a part of our staff. Fast forward to March of 2022, and USA Millwork was divesting all of their assets. They were, were selling off the individual business units. And so my job as vice president of engineering for USM Millwork was ending. I had, you know, a runway I knew within a couple months, uh, once all the business units were sold off, uh, my job was, was no longer going to exist. And the team we had built in Bolivia, their jobs were no longer going to exist. And so I said, well, we've spent all this time in uh, developing these people. Um, 
I think, you know, one, I want to keep them working. And two, I, I was going to do consulting and was starting to, originally starting Duckworks as a vehicle for consulting, for me to consult when engineering with millware companies around the U.S. So, um, but at the same time said, hey, I think I can go offer these drafters services and sell um, millwork drafting and microvolume to other companies in the U.S. I knew, uh, obviously, a you know, over the years, networked with many other com- shops that had that need and said, I think we can take this their services and offer it to the industry, to the market. So I made some calls to, you know, some connections I had and said, hey, you know, could you use help with microvolume drafting if I had a bunch of people sitting available today? And they said, yeah, absolutely. And so that's, that's really how it started. Uh, at the same time, I was traveling and, and starting to consult and helping uh, mill workshops who were saying, hey, can you come and tell us how we can run our engineering department better? And kind of those two things together is really what started Duckworks was, hey, people need help with drafting and engineering, how to run their departments better. And at the same time, we have these people trained how to help um, where if you're lacking talent or you just have larger volume of drafting needs than what you can handle in-house, we can help with that. Um, and, and right away the demand was overwhelming. And so we, we started continuing recruiting and growing our team and, uh, to meet demand. And so that, that was really where it started. Um, the name, where did duck works, the name come from? So, um, I, for many years, you know, had a blog, a personal blog on my website. You can go to jacobedmond.com and still see many of these blog posts. Um, and I had written a blog post a number of years back called Be a Duck. And it was really just about my kind of a per- personal ethos on important work and and, and how to, uh, what characteristics I feel like are important. And it's an acronym, Duck, Be Diligent, Urgent, Consistent, Knowledgeable. And so... Um, uh, but you know, what happened is I had written that number of years back. And then while I was at USA Millwork, some of my people found the blog and thought it was hilarious, thought it was funny, thought it was corny, um, that their, you know, boss Jacob had a blog to begin with. And this particular post, be a duck became kind of a meme. Um, and so when I went to start, you know, pick a name, I felt, okay, well, that was memorable. People remembered that. I wanted something that pe- stuck with people, that people would remember. So I thought, okay, what about Duck Millwork Consulting? Um, another aspect to this, my, my grandmother collected ducks all growing up. Her house used to be filled with Dutch duck tchotchkes, so all types of little brass and golden and ceramic and, and china uh, ducks throughout her house. So it was kind of a dual thing that, to me, the the character of a duck, the the mascot stuck out and um, I had to pick a name though. I had to register with the state. I had to create an LLC and was said, well, what about duck millwork consulting? Um, and I reached out to one of my, my best friends from high school who himself has developed a, a, a hugely successful company and he's really good at marketing. And I said, what do you think about duck millwork? And he said, ah, you need another syllable. You need another word there because it doesn't look right. It's not, not balanced, and also it, it doesn't sound good. And so he said, I'll make it duck works. I said, all right, um, I trust you. Let me, you know, I registered it, and, and that, that was it, duck works, millwork solutions. Um, so that's where the name came from. And fortunately after that, it was, uh, you know, fortuitous. You know, worked with a great um, brand designer and graphic designer who developed our branding, which I, I think has been phenomenal. I love it. And... The idea that duck has been something uh, that our people love. It's very easy to, to play with, a mascot and, and stuff like that. Um, so fast forward now, two and a half years later almost, um, we are about 70 people strong um, at Duckworks. And we have brought drafters to the U.S. Multi, I think six, seven, eight times maybe. We've brought them to the U.S. We're about to um, visit and train on site with clients. Um, almost half of our client base are what we call dedicated teams, dedicated drafters. So 
where we have one or more people of our drafters that just work full time for those clients. Um, and they're embedded in their teams. They're embedded as a part of that client, which you know is really the way that we're able to add the most value. Um, the other half of our team um, works project-based engagements, so where we give you a quote and a price, um, or just work on an hourly basis. Uh, we have teams that are doing full production release through Microvelm to our clients' shops, helping them with full engineering. Um, we have... A BIM drafter, we're doing our first um, BIM coordination project. So we're doing the full submittal for a very large um, project for a client in AutoCAD. And then at the same time, we're modeling in BIM to fulfill the BIM requirements that that project has. So all of the millwork scope is being both modeled for millwork submittals, but also being modeled in the BIM coordination model for the GC and for the architect. Um, we are expanding back into cabinet vision, so we, we have all of our people trained in both AutoCAD, Microvellum, Bluebeam, and now cabinet vision. Um, we have a cloud server in Azure for our Microvellum client configurations. We are perpetually have a constant, one of our flywheels is constantly recruiting, constantly training people. Or we have a dedicated training coordinator, Enrique now, who was one of our most experienced drafters. He now spends all his time training and developing training content for our people. So every drafter who gets hired by us um, goes through screening, but also then goes through a six week training program. We, um, as I mentioned, are bringing team members to IWF and we did the Vegas show last year. So we've been very fortunate, very, you know, kind of overwhelmed by the, the demand and the need of the industry. And as I've been doing the podcast and working with more clients, just realizing how, how much, um, how significant the need is in our industry. You know, we're, like I said before, we're not, um, bringing young people into this industry at the rate that people are retiring and moving on. So I think that's the biggest thing we've been able to find in our niche is, you know, we've, our superpower is, is growing people, training, and developing good drafters. And our purpose, the reason we exist, is we grow people to grow businesses. And so I, you know, I truly believe that that's, that's why we're here, is, is to grow our people so that they can help our clients grow their businesses. You know, All of our clients are growing. Those are the ones that reach out to us, that we're working with, that we have ongoing relationships with, because you know, every owner that I talk to says, well, I could sell more work. My shop could produce more work, could handle more work if I could get it through drafting and engineering. And that's our per that's why we exist is that we want our clients to be able to say yes and not have the limitations of drafting. You know, our, our uh, what we enable our clients to do is drafting without limits. And so we really want them to be able to say, hey, go sell. Um, sell, sell your shop capacity, sell your revenue goals, sell what you can, sell what your clients need. And we'll, we'll be here to help you with the submittals, with the drafting, with the engineering, and help you through that part of your bottleneck and make it no longer a bottleneck. Um, you know, all we do is drafting and design. And so we're constantly trying to find ways to be as efficient as possible. And, and how can we, we add to our tools, belt, our skill sets, um, our people really build the best team to be able to help our clients with that. So... Um, that is, uh, our history. That's the duckwork story. That's about our name. You know, I'll refer back to this podcast when people ask, cause I think, uh, hopefully I've done a, a better job here than I do in the normal one minute elevator pitch. But, um, I hope you find value in this. If you are at the show again this week, please stop by. would love to see you. Um, and just say hi, um, give you a handshake, a hug, take a picture together of me, introduce you to my team. And I would appreciate if you, you know, like and share this podcast. And if you have feedback, if you have ideas I can cover in future episodes, or if you would like to be a guest on this podcast, please reach out. I've been doing more of them and they seem to have been popular with you guys. So I'm going to try to do them more often and get some more interesting topics. So if you have feedback, if you have ideas or questions that you'd love to have me cover in any of these podcast episodes, um, if you go to the show notes, you can contact us and reach out. You can either, um, I think there's a link now where you can text us, but also just shoot me a message on LinkedIn or an email from our website. 
would love any feedback you guys have or just leave a comment. We are on YouTube. We are on all the audio platforms. So lots of ways to get a hold of us. And we appreciate the feedback. Uh, would appreciate if you're not following us or subscribed to the podcast. Um, that, uh, that helps uh, us a lot. This is not something, we don't have any sponsors. This is something that I just do to try to promote the industry, to try to bring voices out that I meet in the industry to hopefully um, long-term better the recruitment efforts of the industry, let people know that there's a career to be had here. And I think just to help with networking, this, you know, people I have on this are people that I've met, people I've interacted with or have been uh, recommended. And for me, the relationships I've built over the years in this industry is really what I credit to, you know, my success and me still being in this industry as a career. And so I've had a lot of mentors, had a lot of friends, had a lot of people that have invested in me, given me opportunities, and continue to this day to be people I work with, people that are customers, people that are partners. So that is key to getting young people in this industry is not just offering a job and a wage, but offering mentorship, offering companionship, offering just a leadership and a people that they want to work with. So being people in this industry that encourage young people to want to be here. And so for me, a big part of that is young people are looking into the internet to see what's out there. And I think that they should hear voices um, specific to our industry and hear content specific to what it's like to work in our industry. So leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify and YouTube. Subscribe, follow, all the above is very helpful if you find value in the podcast. I'm always looking for, to have new and interesting people um, on the podcast. So um, until next time, next week we'll have another um, guest interview. We'll be back with um, guests on the podcast, so tune in for the next one. Thanks. Thank you for listening to today's episode. Do you want to stay up to date about industry insights, new content, and our community of mill workers? Go to duckworksmw.com to sign up for our newsletter. I'll see you in the next episode of Verify in Field.